And welcome back everyone to Quad V. We bring guys live coverage from the Fast Host Power Tournament. It's currently the second map between the Purple Kittens and Raven. We'll be getting it right underway with the knife round. I am Menace and this should be a stellar match. The first match went in favor of the Raven team taking it 13-8 in the beginning. And now uh, it seems that we will be having a little bit of, uh, I'd say banter. They're asking who can win the knife. I doubt that's banter. Knife run a little bit uninteresting to commentate. In my opinion, some casters can do it for some other odd reason. I am just one of the people that lack. Either way, it is down to a three on three. Snakey lands a knife there onto Hav, gashing away at his face. Slicing away at his face, however you would like to put it. Moves are still trying to find a frag. Doesn't look like there's too much teamwork involved into this one. As uh, this player's just pretty much just fi trying to find a frag wherever they can. And now the PPK team trying to get together. Down to one on one. Muzo versus Rickett. Who can land the knife? And uh, Rickett doubling back loads. Lands the final knife onto Muzo. See, I could never do that because my sensitivity is way too low to be able to flick backwards and forth like that. Seem to work out for them though, so I doubt there's going to be any complaints from them. Looks like they will be staying on their sides too. So Raven on the attacking side, and then the Purple -pur Kittens on defense. If you guys did just join us, as I may have mentioned a little bit earlier, this is the second map of the game where Raven are playing versus Purple -pur Kittens. Raven currently one map up. A little roster round number four. We start for the Raven side. We have Dedo, Record, Full, Naki, and Dins for the Purple Kittens team. We have got Half, Cappy, Vodkas, John, UK, and Muzo. The map is backlot. Guess we could have. Uh, they're going to start. Or this is going to start. Have a little overlook here at the map. I do feel it's one of those more little. One of the more even maps. Probably the best way to put it. Yeah, I find it even. I find that on the attacking side you really have got the opportunity to be able to peek a little bit more or peek at the pace you want, move at the uh, move at the pace you want, attack at the pace you want, and you really have a way to more set the the pace of the game, especially utilizing those early rush nades. Uh, whereas on defense, you pretty much just got to wait it out and try and stop the the attacking team as much as you can, which is actually made pretty simple on backlot in my opinion. So one of the more even maps, I feel, and we'll have to see how this one plays out. At the moment, it does seem like we're just waiting for one more, two more players, Vodkas and John UK. Let's see if we can spot them on the server if they are moving. John UK is standing still, and Vodka is standing still for some other reason. Blue Tiger skin on that R700 looks pretty yummy. I never have been a fan of the skins, I've always played it without the skins, but that's just a personal opinion. Where is Mr. John UK? Seems to still just be standing still at the moment. Uh, should be getting the matchup underway shortly. There we go. All players are ready. We do this little twitch coming out from from Mr. John UK. Now, scopes aren't that normal on the back lot, but it does seem like both of these scopes feel confident in their skills to keep the scope in hand. Usually the players would uh, drop the scopes for the AK for that extra firepower on the map where you can pretty much shoot through any wall. So, uh, gonna take it away here with Vodkas as he pushes up towards the B site. See if we can maybe spot Dedo early on. And uh, nothing as of yet. We do see John UK pushing towards the top of the ruins. So good positioning for an AK to be in. But uh, unfortunately, gets caught off guard by Phil pushing up. Interesting one to see an SMG play over on B site. Of course, if it is a B attack, I can understand. But it just seems to be a kind of pick and play as you would. Just trying to find anything he can and then slowly make their way forward. Vodkas did grab himself a frag not too long ago. Uh, yeah, on the B site, so Raven will be careful about that scope in hand, or scope from Vodkas. And he will be watching the cross. Let's see if he can maybe pull off anything or looks away. This is another the situation where, where the Per Per Kittens team really don't have much to stop them pushing onto the B side if they wanted to. They really only have Vodkas. And uh, he seems to be a little bit unsure of what's happening. With that smoke going out there, he won't be able to defend anything pushing onto their bomb side now. I hope they have a nade 
for their sake, they should have an aid. Have still all the way over to the A side. Explosives that should have been called that he should he should have rotated long ago. Cappy taking up Phil as they push forward. And Rickard onto Vodka's Rickard with another one as he takes out Cappy. Where is Hav? He's in mid house. He's in a one versus two. Dedo and Rickard both still alive. Dedo with a lovely little shot there on to Hav. Just flicking back. And first round will go in a slow fashion towards the Raybon side. It's a little bit slower than usual, but, you know, it gets the job done. And uh, Dedo there with a great nade onto Vodka's. Catching the player out that pushes up towards that 10 area so that he can't get that early peak on your players in mid. Den's going for the rush towards top A. Going specifically climbing up on the left hand side to make sure that he doesn't get spotted there by any AKs or any player sitting lower A. Although a player sitting in that window still is able to see his position and therefore was sprayed up but luckily nothing connected. Cappy watching around mid, flicking backwards and forth, seems a little bit nervous about what's happening at the moment. He knows there's a player top A, but he has got two teammates in A, so they don't want to overcommit too, or they don't want to commit too many people to one bomb site, as that'll definitely just detriment the defense. John UK takes out full. Dedder replies onto John UK though, and now Cappy just trying to find a frag at the moment. Duns takes out Hav and Nike onto Muzo. This means that Cappy's actually your last man standing. Finds the first one. And the other player is actually right above him. That is in the mid building. He now does need to go and try and find out where the bomb is. Looks like it has made its way over towards the A side. He's going to go down, although Duns with his Deagle. Superb stuff. Takes out Cap. He pushes it to 2 0. And Rayvon looking strong here in the, in the early rounds. And this is one of those things. I mean, Purple Kittens chose this map, so this is the map they should be stronger on. Um, irrelevant of the side. If they struggle to get a 7-5 at the half time, I'm definitely going to say that it's going to be lights out for them. At least for this game in the groups. Can't be taking out full. We do see him still pushing forward though. As uh, he has spotted two players. And it looks like Purple Kittens are being allowed to push forward very aggressively. Can't be making his way all the way into link. There's a player off to his right hand side. Doesn't die somehow. And uh, <laughs> reach in his health and call his teammates for a little bit of backup. Tries to sneak away there into the little groove there in uh, in the bricks area. But unfortunately, that's not going to work for him. Dedo takes out Muzo. As Dedo is still all the way back at spawn. And now Jonyo is your last player standing. He knows where the bomb is. It was called from his teammates. And now he's going to try and rotate over towards that side. The player's just going to come up over to his left. It lands this frag there onto Dedo somehow. But unfortunately, doesn't know that Nike is just behind the fence. Nike picks up the SMG, does give away his position. Will John Yu re peek? No, he won't. He's actually rushing all the way over to B. Looks like he's just going to jump on this car, see if he can spot the player running in towards the bomb site. He does spot movement on the bomb, but unfortunately, the bomb is not planting on his side of the map. Explosive he's going to go for mid roof. I would. Come on, John UK, be like me. Yes, he is. This is such a good position for him to be in. He can just try and jump up on that fence. He might be able to spot the play. He does spot the hit on the left-hand side. Please tell me his teammates call that. He's moving forward. He's given away his position. He's running up to Briggs. And now he's not really clearing up much of A. He's going to go for a fake. He thinks the player is towards back A. And that is something very wrong to assume. Why was Nike not doing anything? Man, that was actually really close. Nike cutting that one finally. Then again, with the with the time limit that was still available, um, if he hadn't actually, or if he had faked the bomb and he was killed, then of course he still would have had the chance to defuse the bomb. Or the enemy still would have had the chance to defuse the bomb. Anyway, it looks like a time is going to be called in fa or from the per per kitten side. There's no ping issue, so I am going to throw it in there and assume that this is a tactical timeout. I can even ask. Tactical timeout? Question mark. And it looks like they've lost a player. What? Either way, it seems that they're just gonna try and figure it out what's happening on or what's going on, but uh. 
while they're busy with that, guys, do feel free to go check us out on the social media pages on the bottom right-hand side of your screen at the moment. On Twitter, it's Quad V. On Facebook, it's Quad V. And on YouTube, it's Quad V TV. If you guys want to follow me, I am Menace on Twitter and Menace FPS on Facebook, where I'll be updating all the matches that will be happening. If you guys want to go check out our website, it's QuadV.com. We will be updating our schedule at the top of the website. So you can just hop onto the website, see what's coming up. And of course, you can also view the streams through the website. Still no ready-ups happening, so I'm just going to drop in some music, guys, and we'll be right back. Right, seems like these guys are ready to go once again. Seems that they were just having some audio problems uh, from the from the Per Per Kittens team. And uh, it looks like John Yu is back. I believe he was the one that was experiencing the problems. Either way, though, back into this match. It is currently 3-0. It's now the fourth round. And Zoravon are looking strong. <laughs> and Dun just sneaks his way up into the top by grabs the frag on some or And we'll be able to just push forward. His attack pretty much unflawed at the moment. Has spotted have and does take him down with a lovely little deagle to the head. Drops in on Cappy, takes him out too. And has gotten himself the hat trick so far. And has made it look so easy. We do see Johnny flying towards back, eh? Well, peek towards Gerdes, takes him out. 
Oh, sorry, full takes a John Yo, and that's going to be 4 0. And I'm going to just check something because I think I may have. No, I have an awesome stuff. Okay, cool. Thought I'd forgotten to put on my form tweaks. Lovely golden AK coming out from Vodka as he's going to be pushing towards turn. Got to be careful of those nades. Of course, it happened to his teammates early on in the round, so he's got to be careful that it doesn't happen again. Well, it actually happened to him. I lie. So he's got to be careful once again to make sure he doesn't get cut off twice. Does spot a player that's pushing down the side MG alley. Unfortunately, nothing of his bullets will connect. And now being one of the only people here on the B side to cover the B bomb. So he's got to be careful about going down. He's got to play himself very cautiously in this position. Although the golden AK brings luck, so it is told by legend and myth. Slowly trying to find the player on MG. Tags up Dedo incredibly. But Dedo somehow brushes it off, regens his health, and gets a frag for it. And this is where we see that Vodka, or I actually realize for some other reason, Vodka hasn't got scope. And this is where we're talking about the extra firepower that they want. But here, Lost Man standing though. Dens gets himself an AK frag all the way from A side. And that'll make it 5 0. At the moment, not looking so good for the Purple Kittens team. Definitely going to have to try and change something up. We've got Nike with a nice little fast position here, pushing in towards mid. No nades actually coming in from from the uh, the Purple Kittens team. And that's very, very, very bad. Now, it'll just allow Naked to pretty much effortly, effortless, effortlessly walk all the way up onto mid roof. His position has been given away and unfortunately exposes just a little bit too much of, a, of his back towards top ruins and Vodka's going to take him out. Although, I doubt it's going to stop their aggression too much. Down to a three on three. Rickett's got the bomb. Going to push back into mid. Dead are getting heavily tanked out. Muzel takes out Dins. As Muzo is peeking out of the A side, I do feel he should be sitting a little bit more tight, even if he doesn't know the positions of the players. It's very dangerous to just be picked off like that. Rickard now, one versus three. Has he spotted the player? No, he has it on the ladder. <laughs> There's a shot and a little bit of a... and a little bit of a reaction to a bunch of spray coming in his direction. We'll go and pick up the bomb, make his way over towards B. He's got to choose between Muzo or Jonyo. It looks like he's feeling confident taking on Jonyo at the moment. Muzo just standing watching front A with that Deagle does spot. Rickard pushing out that onto that B road. Oh, and Jonyo has given his position away too. Can Rickard sneak in the bomb plant? Goes for the fake. He really does not have the time for this. And, oh man, feels like he's fluffed this one. Both of the players moving into positions to stop him going for a second round of planting. Goes for the fake once more. Doesn't have enough time and will be taken out for all his troubles. We do see Purple Kittens grabbing the first round here after six rounds on Backlot. And after their map choice and their, oh my word, I just realized Hav is going for a bond. <gasps> can we give him commentator's curse just so he can get the bond? Right, so Nades and Smokes have gone out. We'll see Hav pushing forward here on the B site. Now, Dins and Full getting frags. He is on 10. His teammates all around has been tagged. And there we go. Hav goes down. Bond for him. Oh, no. Poor Hav. Uh, Vodka, now you lost man standing. He is all the way over to B. He has picked up the scope once again. Unfortunately, not being able to do too much with it. Still stuck at 10. He should have been all the way over at that A side by now after having his teammates drop. I just want to let Hav know that I have noticed his, uh, his 007, 007. <laughs> we all do love Hav, though. I see Vodka can maybe change it up a bit. Try and get a little bit more aggressive over on B side. We do actually have a an, an shotgun from Hav pushing forward. He's decided, screw this. Let's be aggressive. Let's change things up. John, you and Vodka grabbing frags. And uh, Full going to be the first one to reply for his team. He has actually found the bomb. And by sitting it in this location, he can pretty much just stop the enemy picking up the bomb. Peeking back and forth a little bit. I'm pretty sure by this point, the Ravon guys would know that there is something up over on B. Dedo moving slowly around the corner. Shotgun comes out from Hav, just pushing Dedo back. And Dedo definitely doesn't want to challenge that one. Vodka takes out Phil. Two on four, not looking so good for Ravon at this point in time. Although Din's still fighting, takes out Cappy. 
John Yu coming in from behind to take out Dedo. Have still defending that bomb uh, like a boss. And now Dins is your last man standing. The only SMG actually still alive on this map. Oh, sorry, in this round. Has his part of the play towards top ahead. Is Vodka with scope. And that'll be Dins going down to take it to 6 2 4 rounds advantage. Still in the favor of Raylon. And uh, I doubt they're going to be letting that slip anytime soon. And has have only noticed now that he has a bond. Now Vodka is peeking over to be, towards the B side. It seems like he just keeps on doing the same thing over and over again. I think he's got to be a little bit more aggressive towards the top of Ruins. Try and push out a little bit quicker. Din's making an absolute fluff of things trying to fall down onto the silent jump. And it seems that he's a little bit nervous about it. Does try and turn around, but Cappy takes him out. And now with Raven only having three players left standing. John Yu rotating through mid. Now Ricker taking on Vodka. The fool trying to push up on towards B. He's got his teammate with him. And hopefully these two can work together to clear out that bomb side. Cappy pushing through mid, coming in from behind, while well, Johnny is sitting on there, just sitting behind Laundry, he has tagged up Rickard with an AK, and that's substantial damage that Rickard will have to regenerate. Ooh, but full with the upper upper hand as he takes out Johnny, Rickard coming up big to take out Cappy. Man, big stuff from both of these teams right now. We do see a 7-2 score at the moment, going into the ninth, oh sorry, the 10th round. And the problem is that, as I mentioned before, Purple Kittens were able to choose the map and the side. They're currently sitting 7-2 down. They need at least 7-5 by the half. Otherwise, I don't have too much hope for them. Although we will give them a chance to fight back. Prove me wrong. As uh, we watch full push up here on the B side. Sprays down have. Oh. And Vodka's actually gone all the way to A. And that's the kind of a change that I was talking about. I think a little bit too drastic. I think they're changing up the position he had known instead of going somewhere completely new. But it does work out for them in some other weird and old-fashioned way. And that'll be Purple Kittens pick up a, uh, picking up a round to take it to 7-3. Only two rounds left in the half. Have sitting on one frag. Yay for him. While it seems Rayvon having a field day with frags at the moment. Cappy going to be playing lower A as he pushes out towards Gerdes. Takes out full. Takes out a second one. Can he go for the third? No, he can't. Get shut down by Dins. And now Dins going on his own little rampage as he takes out two. And has the bomb with him. Can he push forward onto the bomb side? There's no players actually left at A. So he has definitely got the chance to push in onto that bomb side and get that bomb down. Vodka <laughs> in with escape across the map though. Takes out Dins. Dead as your last man standing. He doesn't actually have... Scope on him. He has got an AK. Which I feel will in the long run benefit him. Instead of having to hope that one of his teammates dies so he can pick up their weapon. Spray coming in from mid house. He's just going to lay down. Try and regen a little bit of his health before re-peaking. And uh, more spray coming in from mid house. He does spot. I believe that is Hav towards top A. And Hav with his second frag there as he takes out Dedo. 7 4 is the scoreline. Could we see that elusive 7-5 that Purple Kittens so desperately need? Let's take it away. Where is Muzor? I went over him. There we go. Muzor with SMG. Going to be playing bottom eight. He's only, actually the, he's the only one going in towards A directly. You'll have a teammate coming in from mid to watch the front A side. Muzor. He's going to be watching those that ladder. It does seem that they know it's a B push at the moment. And Muzor's going to have to rotate very quickly. He has put a player in mid. And lets out fire for some other reason. And that, of course, just gives away his position. His whole little surprise tactic he had going is unfortunately out the window. And his position, I feel, don't, won't be as effective anymore. Explosive. Bomb goes down from Ricketts. And, and now it is all down to Raven to just defend, make sure that the Per Per Kittens team do not get anywhere near their bomb site. Full takes out Vodka and Full with another one there onto Cappy. Last man standing is Muzo, the man we started with, the man we shall end with. As he pushes up towards top of ruins, there's a player just right inside, although I don't think that's going to matter. There's a player towards Dan. <laughs> Dan's rushing out. I think he will try to go for the knife. 8-4 at the halftime score. Mm, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a difficult, it's a difficult one because it's a doable position, but the, the strengths that 
um, Rayvon have at the, at the moment just, you know, seem to be overpowering the Perk Perk Kitten's team and they just don't really have much of a reply for it. I don't feel that half sitting on 3 for 10 is helping them in any way at all though. And uh, we should have a quick run up here. There we go. Right back into the matchup. Another second half of the second map. It is currently 1-0 in favor of Rayvon and currently 8-4 in favor of them on this map. I just need this map to close off the group game, and that'll mean that they'll be putting another win to their name. As uh, taking away with the SMG seems like Havis changed it up a bit. So far, played AK shotgun and SMG. What gun has he yet to play besides the scope? And uh, it doesn't seem to be doing so well at the start here. Having Cappy go down, record peeking up from the top of ruins building, and uh, just holding his position at the moment, playing playing a nice and a very I was about to say a nice, a nice aggressive defense. He's being very aggressive over towards top runes, which will definitely play against the Per Perkins team. I don't think they're too used to it. Ajonio takes out Rickard and Full before being shut down by Neki. But because you lost man standing, he gets taken out from by Dins from behind. And this is where the Per Perkins team really need to try to do something exceptional because Raybon are a very aggressive defending team. They are not afraid to push out when uh, when need be. Have has got a nice frost front spawn to see if he can sneak past those nades. Doesn't seem well, so and does actually get caught out by a nade inside the Albend area. Dunn's pushing forward into A. Does spot a play towards front A. Takes out Cappy. Can he find another? No, he can't. He's going to try and reload his weapon, reset for another engagement. But wow, he doesn't even need to. And there we go. I mean, the whole of Purple Kitten's just annihilated in 20 seconds. We have another Frost spawn here from Ham. I'm going to keep it with him because, I mean, this Frost, frost front spawns on the attacking side is, are so vital to be utilized. And it seems Ham has found a gap just waiting for the nades towards the middle street area. Dins does go down, peeks out towards mid, but instead falls back. Not wanting to overextend himself and definitely the style to be playing at this point in the game when you're down this far. Ham gets himself a second, taking out dead only Rick and Nake and, Rick and Nake alive. As a Nike with an AK on A takes out have has got an SMG with him too, which will definitely help him out. But a one versus four occurring over on the B side and John sorry, Rickard sorry, Nike. There we go. Definitely needs to get himself over towards B. Oh, fails his climb with a ladder and the jump. He's gonna try it again. He does he cannot be wasting all this time right now. Spots to play towards middle. But that's just a pure distraction at this point in time. He cannot waste time when his teammate's sitting all alone on that B side. Spray coming through the wall here as Cappy tries to gun down Rickard in the garage. Cappy just peeking out once again, just keeping the players distracted. Jonio and Moose are going to close it off. And that's going to be lost two down four. Rayvon takes it 10-5. Still a five-run difference, which is no easy call. And a moose are shooting up <laughs> in the back of the. <laughs> sorry, I'm the. Uh, sorry, I find that oddly amusing. Uh, your five runs down and decide to shoot your player in the back of the. Of course, it wasn't. You know, he didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. But unfortunately, it has caused him to sit in a one versus five situation. He has got the bomb if it makes it any easier, but he hasn't moved further from spawn in the. You know, in the last 20 seconds or so. Fire coming in from every which direction. Nades flying in. Dins takes out Muzo. And that's going to be 11 5 6 round difference now. Just phenomenal stuff from Rayvon. From what seemed to be a very, very, very close first game. Seems that Rayvon are just running away with it at this point in time. But there is still a chance for these guys to bring it back. If Hav can just learn that if he takes the same route where he got killed with an aid before, he will get killed again. And uh, if they can just find a way to shut down Dins' aggressive play then there is some hope. Den's still pushing up on towards MG side. Takes out Muzo, who was the front man for this push on to be. John Yo is your last man standing, also known as John UK. Although it seems that Rickard is set to take this man out. Loads of AK fire landing onto John Yo, and it is going to be Nakey that takes him up. Only, oh sorry, five rounds. Five rounds to close off this final game with. And, uh, it seems that they're trying to blame the good old Rocket aim, which uh, with the Tzak 2 release has been pretty much severed. 
Captain's now pushing out towards mid once more with this aggressive SMG. Let's see him close on this game. Ooh, Hab actually takes out two players as he makes his way into A and has unfortunately gone down to it. But we do see Per Per Kittens in a winnable situation. Full your last man standing. He's lower mid and he is coming under heavy fire. He's got players pretty much every direction of him. And with that car on fire, it's going to blow up. He better run away. He does just barely sneak out. Although he has been spotted by Vodka and Top Ruins and will be taken out. And that's going to put it to 6-12. But six match points still on the board here. It's going to be difficult for the Per Per Kittens team to bring this one back. Let's have hope though, see if they can do it. Whereas uh, Mr. Vodka with SMG had a front spawn, decides to utilize it to his best. And uh, Dedder with an opening nade. Vodka still pushing forward, takes out Nake, he pulls out his Deagle, there is another player pushing out towards mid, lands a couple of tags, but Dins will be able to regen his health, Rickett pushing over the wall, takes out Jonyo in mid, Cappy and Muzu are lost to standing, Cappy coming on a heavy flyer, as uh, he does actually take out Rickett with a Deagle, Dins now moving forward on the front A side, they want to try and just shut down what's left of Per Per Kittens, Cappy gets spotted. Dins takes him out. Muzo is your last man standing. He's been spotted too and that'll be the 13-6. GG well played being called by both teams. It was a superb match in the end and uh, unfortunately just did not go the way of Per Per Kittens. The manly sounding team. I'm pretty sure if they change the team name they'll have a little bit more luck. Either way though, fantastic match between both of these teams. And I want to thank all of you guys for sticking around for the Fossos Power Tournament group stages between Purple Kittens and Rayvon. Rayvon take it in 2-0 with the first map going 13-8 in their favor. Either way, guys, I have been Menace. You guys can follow me on Twitter at, at Menace and forward slash Menace FPS on Facebook. You guys can check out Quad V though on forward slash Quad V on Facebook and Twitter. And then, of course, Quad V TV on YouTube where you can find all our previous VODs and other media content. Either way, though, guys, I hope you guys have an awesome evening and... We'll be right. Oh, sorry. We'll be back with more coverage from the Fastest Power Tournament. Do go check out quadby.com for the schedule, though. Enjoy your evening.